Hey, what's up? This is Martha D. Staub with That Hashtag Show, and I'm back to talk about Star Trek Discovery. Now, if you have seen my previous reviews, you know that I have a little bit of a gripe with Star Trek creating new shows that center around the time before Kirk. Now, I am a die-hard Star Trek Voyager fan, so ever since Voyager ended, I always wanted to see what happened past that. I never got that. We got Star Trek Enterprise, which sucked, which is why I got canceled. And then we got Discovery. Now, it took me a while to warm to Discovery, but the overall aesthetic of this show is just, it's too hard to ignore. So I kind of got pulled into it. And let me tell you, I really do love this show. The season three has been amazing. If you guys have not seen it, go back and watch that, then come back here, because right now I'm gonna give you the top five moments from episodes one to six of Star Trek Discovery. Here we go. Number five, the Jump. As we saw at the tail end of season two of Discovery, a jump to the future has to be made in order to keep the data that Discovery has safe in the current timeline. So Michael jumps ahead of the Discovery in an angel suit and she lands 930 years into the future. And the future is really grim here. It's dark, it's crazy. Although I was actually expecting it to be taken over by the Borg, unless they got defeated somewhere down the line. But you know, it being such such a strong enemy. I figured uh, we were headed into Borg territory, but we didn't. We end up meeting a new character named Book, who ends up helping Michael through this process, and he ends up telling her that the Federation no longer exists. That about 150 years prior to his birth and that timeline, the Federation just up and disappeared. It's like someone snapped their fingers and uh, all of the ships in the Federation exploded. So it's it's very dark, it's very sad, it's a very weird future that Michael has landed in, so I have to see what happens with that. Pretty cool though. All right, number four, the burn. This is weird, but it's very fascinating at the same time. Michael meets Book in this future timeline, and he explains to her that the Federation no longer exists, and that 150 years prior to the arrival of Michael, that one day the Federation ships were in space, minding their own business, and it's like someone snapped their fingers and all the ships exploded. In a mass implosion and no one seems to know what happened or why the warp cores did what they did. Now, I was sitting here thinking this when I was seeing this unfold, it's like, holy crap, what could cause something so cataclysmic? And then I started to think back to a Voyager episode. Go back to season four, the episode is titled The Omega Particle. Now, very similar to what the Omega Particle is, it's, it's almost word per word what they're explaining happened in the burn. So the Omega Particle, Captain Janeway has been locked up in her ready room and she has been looking into the Omega Particle because it popped up on a sensor. It is known that all Starfleet higher-ups are known about this particular particle. And when this particle comes into play, the Prime Directive is out of the window. It is imperative that they stop this particle because all these ships can drop out of warp. It's almost like an atomic bomb. If it's not taken care of correctly, it can burn the sky, which is what they said in Discovery. So Captain Jamie goes down to this planet to find this particle. She ends up taking it and she brings it back to the ship and they created this bubble for it to stay intact. And Seven of Nine is just mesmerized by this thing. Captain Jamie's like, you know about the Omega Particle. And she says, well, yeah, you know, we've assimilated that information, which they assimilated from Jean-Luc Picard. So any information that Jean-Luc Picard had regarding Starfleet and any of those high security things, the Borg knows about. So Seven is looking at this particle and she says, the Borg were so mesmerized by this thing because it is the closest thing to perfection. And right before this particle blows, she's just mesmerized by it. And she, at the end of the episode, explains, it's like looking at God. So what the hell? Could it be the Omega Particle? Did that play into the burn? That's a theory. I don't know, don't know yet, but it's a very good theory. And it's probably the only answer we have leading in to this episode, so possible. Number three, banned from Earth. So Michael had spent that whole year before Discovery found her in this new timeline looking for any clues to the Federation and she found a 12 year old message from Admiral Tall. And so she and the Discovery crew end up going to Earth. However, they can't go anywhere near Earth. Earth is engulfed in this amazing force field by the United Earth Defense Force. 
Might as well just call it Space Force. At least that's what I think Space Force is gonna be in the future. It's a whole different topic. But anyway, it ends up being a very difficult situation. They can't get down to Earth. They can't see an Admiral Tall. They look up this guy, he's dead. So there's really nothing else that's left for them to do on Earth. They do happen to help broker some peace with an Earth enemy because they were able to do that. Some of the crew was able to go down to Starfleet Academy in San Francisco and to walk around. Even though the Academy and Starfleet are no longer on Earth, they were able to walk the grounds. So it was a little bit of a connection back to the past, but um, it's almost a very somber feeling because the earth that they know no longer looks the same. It's very, very different 930 years into the future. So it's sobering, it's sad, but a little bit of nostalgia hit home where they need to be. Plus it was great to see Starfleet Academy again. Number two, the return to Trill. We got introduced to a character named Adrena. She was part of the United Earth Defense Force when they boarded the Discovery, when Discovery was in orbit of Earth. We find out that she knows Admiral Tall, the one Michael is looking for. And she's like, it's kind of hard to explain. Well, it comes to find out she's a host for a symbiote and well they have to return to Trill because she can't get into contact with her symbiote and so when they arrive to Trill Trill's like the Trill people are not too keen about this idea but there are some that think that she is the future so they allow her to go into this murky pool to connect with the symbiote and then she ends up seeing all of the others that are part of that symbiote so it's really cool to go back and see how much the Trill world has evolved and and how they are not even part of the Federation anymore. So it's really interesting to see this future and this uh, you know, evolution of species. So once uh, Adrena was able to make contact, everything seemed out great and they knew exactly where to go next to find the rest of the Federation. So uh, that message was received finally to Michael from Admiral Tall. So that leads and opens the door to reuniting with the Federation. Number one, returning to the Federation. So after Adrena gets the information from Admiral Tall, she, they get the coordinates to meet up with the Federation and they go through this amazing force field that looks pretty cool because all the ships in that bubble are creating this bubble. And it actually reminded me of a Star Trek TNG episode, season four, when Wesley Crusher makes that bubble that Beverly Crusher gets stuck in and the Traveler had to come and help them get out of it. That's what that reminded me of. If there's a connection there, not sure. But one of the cool moments that that happened when they were flying through was that they passed by the USS Nog and that was in memory of the late great Aaron Eisenberg who I knew personally and so that was really great to see and another really cool easter egg there was the Voyager J. There is 10 or 11 generations of the Voyager even Ensign Tilly's like oh man I want to know that story because that's a lot of generations for one ship. So it's great to see that Voyager's legacy has lived on and um, it's very predominant here in this uh, in this timeline. And then of course we meet Admiral Vance. And so the Discovery crew now has to prove themselves as being part of the Federation and working together and, and making part of that. So it's it's really a, an uphill battle for Discovery, but they're here for it. So, and I am too, because it's going to be great. All right, that is it for me on this episode. I hope you enjoyed my top five moments of Star Trek Discovery so far. If you agree, disagree, put it in the comments. I'll write you back and tune in for my next video on my next episode review. So thank you guys so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.